was a little chaotic yesterday afternoon. Because while I was drawing, I began to realize for the first time that when this embryo starts to develop, there are actually four dynamics going on at the same time. So you know, we started out with what they call the, the disc. It's just a, so the embryo is just like a plane, like your hand, like that. And it's, so it's starting to move like this. And at the same time, it's, it's invaginating at the back. So it's, the, the cells are moving here and here, and they're going in and forming the spinal cord. And at the same time, this leaf is closing up in front, forming the alimentary canal. And at the same time, the whole thing is growing. But you, you remember the pictures I showed you of the movement in the air and the water. Remember, this is, this is a little, this, this is only about this big. And it gets to be an embryo, it's still only about that big, beginning you know, in this form. It's all fluid. Fluid m means moving cells. And so there's nothing solid. So you have this amazing, this amazing little form. Like, uh, like something in fluid or something in air, a, a, a very detailed, fine little form coming about. All these movements are happening at once, so it's very difficult to explain. You have to build it up in your imagination. We drew a picture, or you saw a picture of a water, of a vortex. Uh, and it actually goes out again here. So the, so the whole of the water, the whole of the water is moving in itself. If you follow what Rudolf Steiner, the picture he gives of the developing embryo, he gave a course to the, to the teachers in, uh, in 1920 on astronomy. You know you have the ancient, um, we call it the Ptolemaic uh, model. So you have the Earth in the middle and all the planets go around the earth. You know, that's the ancient system. And then this changed to the Copernican system. So here you have the sun in the middle. And the earth was only one of the planets that goes around. And in these lectures, Steiner is explaining both of them are right. Because the actual movement is more like a limnescape. Because the sun is not fixed. The sun is moving around the galaxy. Sometimes the Earth is following the Sun and sometimes the Earth is going ahead of the Sun. It's a very complex movement, which I'm not going to try to make now. It turns out that all the planets are making limnescapes together as they move through the galaxy. And he said, if only the doctors could understand that they, that they can't really comprehend embryology if they don't know how the universe is moving, because it's the same movement. So when we said before that after death, the soul or the spirit and the soul expand into the whole of the universe and then come down again to incarnate, you can use this picture of the water because water is everywhere. everywhere. This is only a form of water. The water is everywhere and yet there is a specific form inside of itself. So you can imagine that this little fetus is the most condensed movement of a vortex, like a vortex limbiscatal form that is connected to the whole universe. It's happening inside the mother. We've become so materialistic in our thoughts, which are really our own creations, our own little pictures. And our pictures are so static because we're so fixed to static things, objects, man-made objects, especially outside ourselves. When we see a little mosquito flying, we're sure it's kind of like a little, um, a, a, little a little, a little, a little mechanical airplane that has all the parts inside and it's just moving around inside. We don't see that the movement of something comes from the hole around it. And you only
only see a part of something that's invisible and full of dynamic forces all around. So if you take, if you take this picture farther, and I want to talk about what the question even had yesterday, or day before you, what was it yesterday? About Lucifer and Ari. But I want to put it in context with what we've been talking about. So we have this first Moriola, yeah, after fortification. He said it's kind of like a seed stone going backwards. It's first stone, and then it becomes more like a berry. And then we have this form. And it's like a, like a leaf, like a plant inside. This is the first disk of the embryo, like a leaf inside. Here's, here's one, the yolk sac, and here's the amnion, here's the corium, and here's the, we become the core. the umbilical cord. This will become the heart here. And here, you still have a tail. So this is... Sorry. So this is the animal. So here we have this lamb. Yeah, in the mineral world, because if you've ever seen how a mineral forms, it forms inside a fluid. And it... it, it, it um, it crystallizes out of the fluid into the, into the form. It's just like that. You can find minerals that are just like that, and they're empty inside, and there's crystal forms inside like this. It's fluid in here. It's, 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 you can break it open, and the fluid comes out when you discover a mineral, for the, um, a crystal for the first time. You can't see it. People who know how to find them, they find these stones. And they break them open, and then you see these beautiful, beautiful crystals. And remember, this isn't really living yet. It can't live, it can't grow. But it's full of life forces all around it. So, and this is the essence of the mineral world. It's contained, it's solid, and it will break into pieces. Yeah? These are just, it just starts to divide into pieces. Not growth, but just form into pieces, these original cells. And then you move to this plant phase, and the essence of the plant is the leaf. Everything, everything is built out of the leaf. Even the stem is a leaf curled into itself. There's no inwardness. It's giving itself to everything outward. The sun is out here. The corium here is the sun. So the essence of the plant form is the leaf and the stem. Every plant can be seen as a metamorphosis, a change of leaf and stem. These are, the blossom is metamorphosed leaves, very, very, very fine leaves now, not moving one after the other, but all coming together. And then, at, at the end of this process, because these, these two, the, 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 the moving out form and the spreading out form in the pollen that spreads out and the what we call the stamen that's there, they come back together and they form this again, they form a seed. So the plant just goes through this process, it doesn't go any further. To go further, the more developed plant plants from the seed begin to go into the earth. So you have the roots, just like you have the roots of the embryo in the placenta. So this becomes the earth. But now, this goes further with all animals. All animals start to develop. You still have some animals in the sea that, that, that are between these two. But all the land animals and the fish and all the reptiles, the amphibians and reptiles and mammals, they have to go through now this animal process. Yeah? And that, what, what happens from here to here? This, which is only a, which is only a, a plane, begins to have an inner space. You begin to have inner, inner cavities inside this. 
the world. So this is this is going to be the eye, the ear is going to be here. The world is coming inside, and you start to have the being has its own movement. It will now begin to move. And eventually, the child, well, this is going to be a beautiful child. <laughs> This beautiful head of the child. Back and, and this be, this tail becomes a nice round little bottom. And it, it starts it starts to have these little little legs and little little arms. Yeah. And this, this very fine mouth. Oh. <laughs> This beautiful little bit. You understand, don't you? It's <laughs> not good. There's a beautiful head here. Yeah? Especially in China, it's a beautiful little head. And now this comes out of the mother. Yeah? This is in the mother earth all the time, and now this becomes free in the air. All right, now I want you to, I want you to think. This is us. All of us were this. <coughs> huh? You're sitting here right now on your chair. How do you do? I'm Jeff. What's your name? <laughs> Anna. Anna. Anna used to be like this. <laughs> Me too. You remember this? <laughs> All of us. And then we were like this. Do you remember? Do you remember when you were? <laughs> do you remember? And then when you were like this. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, and here now you have you have the eye. You have the oh. <laughs> you have a beautiful, a beautiful nose and mouth. And eye. <laughs> okay, I won't try it. But, but already here, before before birth, it's a beautiful little child. You see the picture. Very fine little child. He started opening his eyes. He can't breathe, that's the only thing he can't do is breathe. He's moving, he's inside the womb. And here we have, here we have birth. Now, so, now the child has come outside. And now, now the mother is the sheep. But let's look more at how we go from here to here. I told you, in the, in the animal forces, you have these two dynamics of invagination, sorry, invagination and buddy. So let's look at, so here's, the, here's where the ear is going to come. This is, we'll talk about the eye in a minute, but here's the ear and here's the hand. Yeah? So here is a good example if we follow how does the ear develop and how does the arm and the hand develop. So if we look at this, so you begin to have this this little bud here, yeah? Little bud of the hand. So it's so there it is, and then at 32 days, it starts to come out here. So there's 32 days. And then this, this begins. To go like that. So you have this form, and now it's beginning, it's budding, and it's invaginating at the same time. Can you see that? So it begins to be more and more like this. So the, the arm isn't even happened yet. Just the hand is coming out of the body. This is 40 days. And then finally, these fine figure, fingers, and the thumb come out. And the hand begins to come out as a hand from the body. And so the, the whole thing is budding out, and at the same time, you have this invagination process happening, this sculpting process. Yeah? And this is 70 days. Yeah? And at the same time, so here, right here, you have just a little spot, a little spot, and it starts to go, as this is going out, this starts to come in. And then all of a sudden, this comes out. You have, you know, you have these 
this bow, this semicircular canal that has three different loops and three different directions of space. You know? And then, and then you have the cochlea of the inner ear just come out of that. So this is at 70 days, this is at 40 days, this is at 31 days, and this is 22 days. Now remember, we, we called these, this budding process the male principle, and this invagination process the female principle. So again, you have this invagination, but at the same time you have this inner body happening inside. And if you, you think about the hand, now you're going to have more and more days, this is going to become the arm, and this is going to become the ear, because the actual outer ear is going to form here. And so you have, so you can imagine this again, it's all happening simultaneously. All the organs, all the structures are coming about through this same kind of dynamics. And look at, this is a completely active force, yeah? and the hand will be active with the will going out always. And in listening, in the ear, there's no, there's no will movement. It's completely receptive. When the air waves come along here, eventually when the air is finished, they'll come and they'll move the bones. The, those, the little bones in the air will form here. They'll be moved by the wind. They'll move the fluids, which will move through the cochlea, which will move the little hairs, which will give us the sensation of sound. But here you have active forces. Here you have receptive forces, and they're always working together, yes? Always working together in, in artistic, creative, sculpting form. So remember we had that invagination happening here to create the spinal column, and then little, little, um, little buds start to form here, which will be internalized, which will be the, the vertebrae, yeah? And at the same time, the, uh, the, the alimentary canal from the mouth down to the anus is coming in, is coming in here through the, through the fold and invagination from this side. Yeah? These are beginning to bud out and the senses are beginning to invaginate in so that the whole being is, is coming in and coming out at the same time. And the first organ, besides the the, even the brain hasn't formed yet, you have the spinal cord, the first organ is here, it's the heart begins to develop. It's first very much outside, yeah, the heart. And this is a most amazing process. You know, the placenta is here, and the mother's blood is... The mother's blood is coming up to this, and, and the, the child's blood has to be separate from the mother's blood. And the, the blood cells start to develop but all over the body. Little blood cells start to come into being. You know, now the blood cells for us come from inside our bones, but there aren't any bones. So actually blood is the most, the most vital for forces. And these little blood cells start to form out of all the other cells. And then they start to migrate. They start to move. They start to gather only here have to take these out in the middle. So they start to gather only on the outside. And then they start to move. They start to flow. And they flow in here, and they flow out here, and they flow back in, and they flow here. You start to have the circulation. There's no heart pumping here. And these can't be moved by the mother's blood, because the mother's blood has to stop here, and you just have osmosis of nutrients that are needed. For, for to be in the blood here, and, and, uh, and gases, yes, and oxygen. So nutrients and oxygen is brought up to the placenta, and then these cells pick it up, and they start moving it throughout the body without the heart pumping. And if we could, like, look at an area here, how this happens. So you have this flow. It, they come together and they start to make a flow, these blood cells. And it's just flowing liquid not in any kind of tube. There's no vein or artery there. If you ever stood on a, on a bridge and watched a little stream, you'll see the stream going quickly here, and on the edge, it's not going so quickly. It's going slowly. So these cells are moving quickly in the center, and these are going slower here. And slowly, these cells begin to form together and stop moving. 
and these cells are still moving through. And these same cells, they start to make a vein or an artery. They start to be solid around the edge. And this is flowing quicker in between. This is really creation in, sub in, in flow, in flowing form. So the flow itself begins to start to make all the little arteries and all the little veins because then some of these leave holes and they come out here, yeah? And then another flow starts. It's like flowing, like you had a great storm and this water comes down on the earth and it starts creating all of its pathways through the flow of the water. And there's no heart pumping it. And the heart of the mother is not pumping it. So you have blood flow before you have a heart. That's why Rudolf Steiner says the heart is not a pump. The heart doesn't move the blood. The blood moves the heart. And that's exactly what we have here. This begins to come in here and form together, form these very complicated movements in this. And the, the actual flow, just like this, is forming the heart here. And then it flows out here. So this becomes, eventually we become the venous blood, the, vein, the veins, and this, this will become the arteries, which will then come back in here because this will be brought, you know, as to get here, this will be brought back in here, and then you have the arteries coming out and the veins coming back in. You know. And the flow of the blood, the movement that it takes here between that which is coming in and that which is going out, starts to make uh, what's called, you can do it with what's called a water ramp. You can do it with water. It starts to make a pulse, and the pulse is created out of the flow. So at 17 days, this is the first one, the heart starts to be formed. I've just been talking about the blood, but this, this is, there's activity going on with the neurons, with the brain cells, starting to make a brain out of this migration of cells that come out of the original uh, stem cells that start to become brain cells rather than blood cells. So the brain is starting to form at 18 days here. You've had, you've had this canal form here. Yeah? It's formed. It's, it, it's not a budding form. It's because everything is invaginated around and left the canal. But now this whole canal starts to invaginate some places and bud other places. So the, the lungs will start to be formed here, out of this canal. Yeah. The um, lungs here. Oh yeah, lungs. 25th, 20th, on the 25th day, the lungs will form. Starting. This is when things are starting to be formed. So this will just start to come out of the canal. The cells in the and on the around the canal will start to come out and form on their own lungs. The, the liver at 18 days. So in here, also the liver will start to come and be formed. Yeah, and the and the stomach at the same time. Sorry, the stomach and then there's a liver formed. And the kidneys, but they come out of. So this is coming out of the endoderm. This is coming out of the exo exoderm. And the mesoderm, you have all the cells that will become. Uh, this is also mesoderm, the cells of the heart. And then you also have the kidneys being formed in the mesoderm. Yeah? The gonads or the ovaries will here start to be formed already on the 23rd day. Um, the, the pancreas, here, pancreas will come off the canal and it's coming at the 30th day. So all these cells are differentiating, invaginating, budding out. So 30 days is almost four weeks. So in the first four weeks, you have all the organ systems forming. Not yet the bones, but all the organ systems. Now look at this. And try to, try to feel the difference between the physical body and the life body. This is a physical process. This is going at a certain speed. These are going slower. This is starting to coagulate, and we can look at the biochemistry and see physically why there are substances here that develop which coagulate this, and, and these would coagulate, but they keep moving. If, if the blood comes out and stops, it coagulates. So your, 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 the, I know, but should, the, the vein form and the, and the artery form are coagulated blood. And when the blood comes out, 
and brings nutrients to an organ. You can see that's a physical process. When the blood cell comes out, it moves into another organ. And biochemically, we can, we can study all of these cells and all of these substances, all of these enzymes and all of these hormones, and we can see that they are active in different places. And with modern medicine, we can go in with chemicals and we can change the hormones, we can change the enzymes, we can change the blood, we can change things physically, and the body will change. So when the body is doing things with its chemicals and with its substances, we can understand why one, in modern chemistry, and bio, uh, biochemistry, why one thing is doing, is affecting another. And we can see that all of these chemicals, all of these enzymes, all of these hormones, are created through the DNA inside the cells, through the, through the, the DNA re replicating, using these uh, amino acids in the DNA strands to make all these different substances. You know how, so you have the chromosomes here, and they're, they're made out of little, little, in, little bits of, of protein called amino acids. Now, we know all the different kinds that make up the, the, uh, the chromosome, yeah? And we know that there are organelles that bring other amino acids over here. So this is called the RNA. And here, in here, this is called the DNA, yeah? And we know that there's a physical process where this comes over and this is replicated so that this, is, in a way you could say, this synthesizes various chemicals that are then taken off into the body. And we know a lot about this. We know about these substances, what cause and effect happens with the different substances. That's what modern medicine works with. But what this can't explain is where these things are, how they are, why they, why they migrate here, why they form this form and not that form. This is called the morphology. Why does it, why does it all, we understand this chemical factory going on. We can even reproduce it in the laboratories, but we can't make any living thing because we don't know how these forces, what are the forces that bring this and form this and form this together and give it the, all the particular rhythms it has. We don't, we can't produce that. We understand that if you have a gene here that gets reproduced here, you will begin, you will have a certain enzyme that will have an effect on your organ. If you don't have that gene, you won't produce that and it won't make the enzyme that you need. We understand the biochemistry because we've gone in and killed everything and, and with our microscopes we found every different substance and we put them together and we understand the chemistry. And that's very powerful. Because we can change, we can affect the human being, but we can't create the human being. Because the etheric forces are the forces that are, that, are, that are like the invisible sculptor who's bringing this here and moving that there and moving that around there and turning that inside out there and budding out, out there. <laughs> and that's what you're working with. You're working with those forces that are bringing vitality and life but, but, but wisdom to all parts of the body. But that sculptor, that invisible etheric body sculptor, isn't just sculpting. It's also listening to this music of the astral body. It's listening to the rhythms. It's knowing here I need to do this rhythm. Here I need to do this much faster. Here I need to go much slower. It's listening to the music of the astral body. And what is the astral body listening to? The astral body is like a musician reading a score and who wrote this score? The I wrote this score. Your I wrote this score. This is your score. So the astral body, which could make any kind of animal, any kind of human being, with telling the etheric body how to work, is for you reading your biography. How should I make this body for this particular person? 